Hi, this is Cooking with Gary. We're going to make some uh, potato salad today. This isn't something I make very often, so this is kind of a, a I'm kind of winging it today, so we'll see how it goes. I've got quite a few unique um, ingredients that I'm going to work with, and I think it's going to turn out very nicely. And I hope you all like it, and I hope it make I hope it becomes one of your like summertime uh, meals that you have that you put with you know when you're grilling out with the hot dogs and the burgers and all that good stuff. And don't forget grilling the chicken while you're at it. And so uh, let's get started. Okay, we're up close to the counter now, and. Um, I've started off with about five or six uh, eggs. I boiled them. You put them in a pot of water, bring it up slowly. As it's heating up, you put the eggs in. I time them for about, once the water gets real close to a boil, I time them for about 13 minutes. Then I carefully take them out, put them in ice water, and let them cool down. That works out pretty good. And I slice them up just so they're still chunky. I don't want them uh, real thinly sliced. And we've got, um, about a half a cup or a quarter to a half a cup of olives and about the same amount of onion. You can cut the onion up pretty fine. You want that to kind of fall into the food while you're while you're eating it. You don't want chunks, too big of chunks of onion. I've got about five medium sized potatoes. I, I boiled them from the other water from the uh, eggs. I use a green pad and I scrub them on the outside with water to get them clean. So we can combine these together now. And um, we'll put the eggs in last because I don't want them to fall apart. And we'll put in some uh, fresh black pepper. And I, I always use two kinds of pepper because you get different flavors from it. There's a, there's a method for all that. And then we got lemon pepper seasoning. What I do is I just cover the top of what I'm making, basically, and that's usually enough like that. So there's not a real measurement for it. I'm using something people don't use very often. It's Old Bay. Old Bay. And again, I just... This is a real thin powder. And again, I just try to coat the outside just enough. And then I've got some... Just some regular yellow mustard. And we're not going to use too much of that, but enough to enough to do the same thing. This is this is a blue cheese dressing and dip. So you can uh, you can use this for a lot of things. I don't really use mayo because I don't use it for anything hardly. So I just take a couple spoonfuls of this and throw it in there like that. Maybe three of those will be enough. Now there's a little kicker coming in is we're gonna do something I've never seen before. That's why I was saying we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna use some regular plain yogurt to go with this, and that should make that pretty interesting. I'm gonna use about the same amount of yogurt as the uh, the blue cheese dressing. You don't have to use blue cheese, of course not. You can use any kind. If you don't like that, kind of you don't want to use dressing, you can just use regular um, mayo if you want. And then we got garlic powder. Put some of that on top. You could use uh, fresh garlic, cooked garlic, any of that kind of stuff if you want. That'd be fine. And then to spice it up a little bit, we'll put in a little bit of red wine vinegar. Just one, and then one more time. We'll call that good right there. start stirring this up. I wasn't sure that was going to be enough blue cheese dressing. It looks like it's going to be just right. Look at that. There we go. And then we've got, um, we've got the, the Himalayan sea salt. I don't use any. Um, I like to use this like a finishing salt on top. So that would be good with this. I use this like if you're making popcorn or if you got cooking a burger and you're putting a little salt on top, I use this. If I do a, a lot of cooking, I just use uh, regular sea salt. This is a, this is like a Dijon type mustard, but it, it's called horse horseradish, so it gives it a little more kick. Again, you know, you can use whatever spices you want. That's what this is all about. 
and you could put more in or less in. What was that? I don't know how much that was. A uh, tablespoon, two tablespoons. And then you just stir it in. And then we're going to we're going to add the eggs to it. Let me get a taste on this because I want to see where it's at spice-wise. That's good. Uh, I forgot one spice though. I forgot the uh, the whole oregano. You gotta have oregano. Right about like that. This is great. Now this is something you really want to let sit overnight because uh, the oregano will open up in the uh, in the moisture in this, and it will pull the, the moisture will pull the flavor of the oregano out. Like a lot of this type of food, you kind of have to do it that way. Yeah, the tartness is really nice from the uh, rice wine vinegar. That worked great. So, put these guys in now. I put a little oil in this so I wouldn't have to fight the uh, the um, the eggs. I didn't want them to break up. So I'm just going to incorporate this just enough to get the eggs into it. That's going to be nice. I'm real hopeful about that coming out great. And then when you after you refrigerate it overnight or so or a couple days and then you put it on your plate to eat it you could you can still take a little fresh cracked pepper on your plate and give yourself a little more of that pepper flavor if you need it if you'd like it so I give this one a big thumbs up I'm real hopeful this is gonna come out great and I think you're gonna enjoy it we got some good ingredients and a lot of little flavors put together. We put a lot of little, a little amounts of stuff together, and it makes a, and it's a lot of flavor. It's really not that hot, spicy, burn your mouth, which I like food like that. I'm probably gonna put some red chili peppers in this afterwards, to see how that goes. So thank you very much. Have a great day.